Um, before we begin, I want to um, uh, do what we have not done uh, adequately in the past, and that's to thank Mike for being our technical support uh, person for, uh, for our being on Zoom. Uh, he's uh, often assisted by, uh, uh, by, by Bill uh, Ravani as well. Um, today, we also thank uh, Derek Ellertson again and his assistant, Daniel, for uh, uh, helping us to have the screen, um, uh, the, the service on the screen. Um, so thank you to everybody. Before we begin, are there prayer requests first from people gathered here this morning? Yes, Mary. My friend is coming. And what's your friend's name? Anne. Anne? Okay, thank you. Anyone else among folks here? How about folks online? If you want to unmute your microphone to add to our prayer, our prayer requests. I don't see any. So let's. Hi. Oh, yes, June. Do you have a prayer? Request? <laughs> yes, my granddaughter is coming in from Florida to have eye surgery at I should know this place well known, but anyway because she had this Thomas Johnson syndrome uh, a year or so ago, and it affected her eye. So we're hoping that the surgery goes well, so she will not have any more problems. What's your granddaughter's name? Jenna Ship, S-C-H-I-P-P is in Peter. Okay, thank you. Thank you, June. Any other Thank you. If not, then let's have uh, Daniel. I think you're the only Sunday school kid again today. You want to come up here with me and say the prayer? We'll lead all these people in this prayer. And your and your cats too. Going. Get it. Stand over going. here. Stand over here. There you go. Right. Go there. So, see? Going. That way people people who are watching at home can see. Now, let's fold our hands. Daniel, fold your hands even with your hands full. And let's say the prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. I see Miss Margaret is back there waiting for to take you to Sunday school. Thank you, Margaret. We continue with the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess, confess our sin, receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are victims of sin and cannot forgive ourselves. We have sinned against you and not the virgins. By what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved the God. We have not loved the God who possesses ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your word and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, gave his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
fight. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like this covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. 
I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the, he to the Romans, chapter three. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin, but now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works. No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free. Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I chuckle every time I read this passage from John's, from John's gospel, where, where the Jewish leaders come back at Jesus and say, wait a second, how could you talk about us not being free? We've always been free. We've never been slaves of anyone. And yet, their whole identity as a people was that they were the people whom God had rescued from slavery in Egypt and had moved powerfully uh, into the promised land that he had promised to their ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, to Isaac and Rebekah, to Jacob, and all of his descendants. How easily we forget what's really at the root of our identity. 
Perhaps we Lutherans, as we observe, I won't even say celebrate Reformation Day or Reformation Sunday. Perhaps it's helpful for us to be sure that we are kind of touching our roots, making sure that we are reminded of what Lutheranism means in the whole context of the ongoing work of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I did a baptism recently in which half of the family was Lutheran and half of the family was Catholic. And I, I, I was asked to make a big thing out of, and was happy to do so, make a big thing out of the fact that on our understanding of baptism, there is no difference between the Roman Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We're together, we are, we understand one baptism. That doesn't mean that we are all part of the same structure. You know that we aren't. And that we Lutherans haven't been for 500 years, for almost 500 years. In 2030, I think, we will celebrate the kind of the, the constitution, if you, or the Declaration of Independence, if you will, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from the Roman Catholic Church. But you're also aware that Luther never intended to break from the Roman Catholic Church. We don't call this the Lutheran Revolution. It's the Lutheran Reformation. Luther and Lutheran scholars since him, Lutheran theologians, Lutheran congregation members have continued to offer to the world a vision in which we understand that our righteousness, our worthiness, our claim on oxygen in this universe is based not on anything in ourselves, but is always and only based on God's promise to us, the promise he made when we were baptized, whether Lutheran or Baptist or uh, Presbyterian or Roman Catholic, it makes no difference. God said to us what God said to Israel over and over and over again, I will be your God. Not even in a future tense. Let's fix that. I am your God. That's the starting point. The next movement is, and you will be my people. You, again, are my people. Because I have, because I have promised because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. I have promised you life eternal in communion with God and with all the saints. That's the central message of the Lutheran movement in Christianity, that God passionately loves all people and the whole creation. Now, Lutherans, as of 500 years ago, didn't really understand how broad this understanding went. Early Lutherans weren't sure that black people qualified for grace. Generations later, it was questioned whether women 
have a full place in the life of the church. First, the question was, could they vote at meetings? Ooh. And eventually it was, can they be pastors? And now, something I'm very happy about, something like half of the bishops in the ELCA are women, which I think is good for the church. We continue to be a reforming movement within the church. We still have not gotten to kind of that, that, that golden place where we actually, we actually in our word, in our practice, in our customs, show equal love to all people. We still have our prejudices. We still have our prejudgments, but we know, we know that that's a sign of our brokenness, not a sign of our saintliness. We know, and we begin each service with a confession saying, we have not acted always the way the children of God should act. And for that, we are sorry. We seek forgiveness. We live as forgiven saints. We live as people who are over and over and over again forgiven of their sins and sent back out into the world to share that light, that love that comes only from God. I don't know exactly what the next reformation issue facing the church or even facing our congregation is. These things always kind of surprise us, but I'm confident I'm confident that is, if we keep, as the, the phrase goes, keep our eyes on the prize, keep our eyes on what is absolutely central to our mission and ministry, and that is the good news of God's abundant love for all people and for the whole world. If we keep our eyes there, I believe that we will have the wisdom to move forward, to face challenges that we haven't even imagined. Who, who thought two years ago that a germ would change the earth in two years? We don't know what challenges lie ahead, but we know that we can live in the promise that God has made, never to abandon us. <clears throat> In Jesus' name, amen. Right. 
priceless worth. Send peace and unity on earth. So mortals in all final strife and lead us out of death to life. Please join with me in our profession of faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Strengthen the church to rediscover paths of love throughout the world and raise up teachers and leaders to guide communities of faith into joyful ways of welcoming, worshiping, healing, praying, singing, feeding, teaching, loving, and living. Hear us, O oh God. Embolden movements of people to care for the world around us. Reveal to us creation's beauty and teach us to care for your fields, valleys, mountains, streams, oceans, and deserts. So that true future generations will continue to be awed by them. Hear us, O oh God. Grant courage to all the world leaders who hear your call for peace. Protect all who live in lands affected by, by violence. Strengthen the United Nations and all worldwide peace efforts that help us to live in harmony as neighbors who share a common planet. Hear us, O oh God. Provide refuge and help for all who lack adequate food, housing, or health care. Strengthen organizations that provide neighborly care to all who struggle, heal, and be present with all who are sick or suffering in any way. Especially today, Raphael and Michelle, Anne, and uh, June Brickwood's granddaughter. I believe her name is Janice, um, Betty, Jim, Gordon, Pam, Landon, Phyllis, Ellis, Paul, Ginny, Lorita, Corey, Carl, and Bev, Debbie, Eleanor, Dick, Jerry and Darlene, Eloise, Rick and Sandy, Rob, Ruth, Veronica, Joan, 
and all those who we mention in our hearts or out loud to ourselves. That all may be healed. Hear us, O God. Pour out your wisdom upon all voters who will go to the polling places on election day and uplift candidates and campaign workers locally and nationwide that your vision of neighborly love and justice would infuse every community. Hear us, O God. Today, we rejoice in celebration for the birthdays of uh, Daniel Ellerson, Joanne Panzer, and Dan Ryman, and the baptisms of Connor Ellerston, Ellerston and Susan Walger. Hear us, O God. We give you thanks for the witness of the saints, especially reformers throughout generations who work to rediscover the proclamation of the gospel. Guide us in their way of living until we all gather together at your table of abundance. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Please share a sign of peace as you are in. from the rain and seek for warmth against the cold. Humble earthly homes where heaven is our light, our fortresses of faith upheld by heaven's might, for we are built upon the rock of our Redeemer. Secure Amid the tempests of our time, though the winds may blow, though the floods may rise, though the storms may rage abroad, this refuge will abide, for we are built upon the rock of our Redeemer, built upon the cornerstone of Christ. Here his spirit speaks, his children walk in truth. Guided by his word, we are disciples from our youth. Here we learn of love, here we feel his peace, and here we gather strength to stand in time of need, for we are built upon the rock of our Redeemer, secure amid the tempests of our time. Though the winds may blow, though the floods may rise, though the storms may rage abroad, this refuge will abide, for we are built upon the rock of our Redeemer, built upon the cornerstone of Christ. He sacrifice of joy amid our strife. Here we seek his perfect grace and everlasting life, for we are built upon the rock of our Redeemer. Secure
pure amid the tempests of our time. Though the winds may blow, though the floods may rise, though the storms may rage abroad, this refuge will abide, for we are built upon the rock of Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat and drink the gifts of God for all the people of God, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. May this gift of the living body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor 
and give us God's peace. Amen. announcements. Um, uh, the, first of all, as you see the screen we have up here, the church council voted this, uh, this past week to go ahead and purchase this, uh, actually an upgraded version of, of this. And we hope within a few weeks to, to have that and it will be part of how we, uh, how we do church. Uh, you are not required to give up your your paper bulletin, if you prefer that, but you are also not required to take a paper bulletin if you prefer to read the, the liturgy on the wall. We will continue to have uh, the equivalent of the pink sheet or something like that with announcements for those of you who choose not to take a, uh, uh, a bulletin. A um, couple of uh, things scheduled for this week. The uh, on, Saturday afternoon at four o'clock, we have our service of remembrance for our, our, our members who died during the, during the pandemic that we weren't able to have full funerals for. And so we're combining, this is the eve of all saints uh, and we will be celebrating the, uh, the lives of, I believe it's 10, uh, 10 of our members who died uh, since the last time we were able to have funerals. Um, the following, and, and everybody is, of course, invited to, uh, to that service on Saturday afternoon. Uh, next Sunday morning is All Saints Sunday, 
and we will broaden the lens and we will be celebrating not just those 10 saints, although they will be remembered as we usually do with the uh, chiming bell uh, during the prayers. But we also invite you to remember anyone who is of, uh, of blessed memory. Uh, and uh, to, uh, if you, you're invited to bring a, a candle, uh, a candle holder to keep it from melting all over things. And we'll have uh, tables set up here uh, for you to bring your candle, preferably get here a few minutes before, uh, before the church service. And after the service next Sunday, you'll be able to take your candle uh, back with you. We will have some candles available if you wanted, uh, want to light a candle and you forgot to bring a candle, um, we'll be able to accommodate that uh, as well. Um, uh, every Tuesday, we continue our uh, grief and growth group, one o'clock on Tuesdays. Uh, anybody who has experienced uh, uh, significant loss in your life is welcome to, it's basically a, a, a drop in, there's no like curriculum or um, you have to have been there for the last three weeks to know what's going on uh, this week. Uh, it's, the, it's the combined wisdom of the participants that is the power of that group. And again, I invite you um, to, to join with us. Are there uh, other announcements that folks would like to make? First, again, folks here. Bible study continues Wednesdays, one o'clock and 7 p.m., uh, either uh, in person or by Zoom. Um, the trend is towards Zoom, but we'll, we'll, um, however that works for folks. Uh, there is a study guide that you can pick up in the back of the church for this coming Wednesday's uh, uh, service, our um, Bible study, and uh, would uh, love to have your your participation, one o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock at night. Other announcements? Uh, yeah. 46. 46 people in attendance here. Does that count Daniel? Yes. yes. <laughs> and how about his three cats? <laughs> That's 49. <laughs> uh, anybody on, online who has an announcement to share with us? Pastor, this is Greg. Yes. I just want to uh, thank all of you in the congregation for lifting me up in your prayers and thoughts. I uh, had surgery this past Thursday at Lutheran General Hospital after getting up at five o'clock in the morning to meet the deadline that I had to meet to get there. I, am, I came home the same day. I'm doing miraculously well. I think that is the right word for it. Now, part of it, one of my friends pointed out that since I'm on a prescription for Norco every four hours, I think that, you're doing fine. <laughs> that, that could be a big reason why I'm doing fine. But again, I wanted to express my thanks to everyone for their very kind thoughts. Thank, thanks for sharing that with us, Greg. Uh, anyone else online uh, have an announcement to share? I'll just uh, share on the common theme of narco or whatever that drug is. Uh, last, last Sunday, as some of you know, my mom uh, fell at the nursing home where she lives. Turns out she broke her um, pelvis and there's no surgery for that. She's, uh, she was in, in the hospital for three days. Now she's back at Lutheran home, but now in the rehab um, section of Lutheran home. Um, heavily drugged. Um, so the last three days I've seen her, I've not been able to really carry on a meaning, meaningful conversation with her. I ask you to continue uh, uh, to keep her in your prayers. I'm, I'm confident that as she gets stronger in therapy and so on, they'll be able to lower the dosage of the drugs and she'll kind of be back to mom again. <laughs> but, uh, but in, in the meantime, it's, it's a very, uh, Un uncomfortable uh, situation, but she's comfortable. That's that's the most important thing. Any other any other news to share before we? I'll turn the camera around again. Again, Derek, thanks so much um, for um, hosting the the uh, screen. Let's see if we can do this.
Everybody go to coffee hour now. <laughs> All in your own ways. Dunkin' Donuts across the street. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.